Hey there, if you study a lot but still forget most of it, this video is for you. I'll show you the proven, science-backed methods that actually change how your brain learns, not just what you memorize for a test. By the end, you'll have a concrete plan you can use tonight, plus simple rituals that make learning faster, deeper, and less stressful. Let's get into it. Section 1. Active Recall. Force your brain to remember. Most people spend hours reading their notes. That feels productive, but it's low return. The brain doesn't encode facts by seeing them again. It encodes them by retrieving them. That's active recall. Examples. Cover your notes and try to write down key ideas. Talk through a concept out loud. Teach it to an imaginary student. Even closing your laptop and saying, what were the three main ideas I just read? is active recall. Mini exercise, 60s. Pick one paragraph you read recently. Close the book. Try to recall as many points as possible for 60 seconds. Speak out loud or write them down. Compare. Notice what you missed. That's the info your brain needs to strengthen. Why it works? Retrieval creates stronger memory traces than passive review. It's testing as learning. Make this the core habit of every study session. Section 2. Spaced Repetition. Schedule your memory. Cramming feels effective short-term, but you forget fast. Spaced repetition spaces reviews across time, so memories get consolidated. Start with short intervals and expand them. Review after one day, three days, a week, two weeks. Practical Tools. Flashcards, paper or apps like Anki, simple calendar reminders, or a physical review box. Put a small set of the toughest cards in the review tomorrow pile. Example schedule. Day 0. Learn. Day 1. Quick recall review. Day 4. Longer recall. Day 10. Another review. You'll notice retention skyrockets. Tip. Keep your flashcards focused. One fact or concept per card. Good cards force you to produce an answer, not recognize it. Section 3. Interleaving. Mix it up to learn better. Studying a single topic for a long block feels comfortable, but interleaving, switching between related problems or topics, improves long-term learning. For example, instead of doing 30 algebra problems in a row, alternate between algebra, geometry, and a short review of formulas. It feels harder, but that difficulty is the point. The brain learns to discriminate and apply knowledge more flexibly. Actionable. Design your study sessions with two to three small modules and rotate through them. After a week, you'll see better transfer of skills. Section 4. Elaboration and the Feynman Technique. Elaboration means explaining ideas in your own words and connecting them to what you already know. The Feynman Technique formalizes this. Pick a topic, teach it aloud simply, find gaps, go back and fill them, then teach again. This forces clarity and highlights misconceptions. If you can explain a concept to a 12-year-old, you own it. Practice after each chapter. Spend three to five minutes teaching the concept in plain language, speak or write. That small effort pays huge dividends. Section 5. Dual Coding. Combine words and images. Your brain remembers information better when it's encoded in multiple forms. Combine verbal notes with sketches, diagrams, timelines, or flowcharts. Even simple visuals, arrows, boxes, or a stick figure timeline. Lock details into your visual system. Action step. Take one paragraph and convert it into a two-part note. One sentence summary plus a small diagram. Test recall from the diagram later. Section 6. Effective note systems. Cornell, Zettelkasten, and smart summaries. Notes aren't just a record. They're a learning tool. Here are three practical systems. Cornell notes. Split page into cues, notes, summary. Review by covering the notes and testing with the cues. Zettelkasten. Mini cards plus links. Write atomic notes and link them. 
Over time, you build a map of ideas. Great for deep projects. Smart summaries. At the end of a lecture, write a two to three sentence summary and a one line why it matters. That acts as your retrieval prompt later. Pick one system and apply it for two weeks. Consistency beats fancy systems. Section seven, environment and focus rituals. Learning depends on attention. Create a distraction-free zone. Phone in another room, notifications off, desk tidy. Just the materials you need. Use the Pomodoro technique. Study for 25 minutes, then take a five minute break. After four rounds, take a longer break of 15 to 30 minutes. If you prefer, you can try other versions. Study for 45 minutes, rest 10 minutes, or study for 52 minutes, rest 17 minutes. Test them and see which rhythm works best for you. For conceptual subjects, like philosophy or math understanding, longer blocks of 45 to 90 minutes are usually more effective. Add a ritual to begin each session. Make a cup of tea, clear your desk, or write down your main goal for the session. These small rituals tell your brain it's time to study. Protect that focus block and treat it like a meeting with yourself. That's when deep learning really happens. Section 8. Practice retrieval across contexts. Memory tied to only one context is fragile. Practice in different places and modes. Read at your desk, quiz while walking, explaining to others. This variety strengthens retrieval cues. Also, test under exam-like conditions. Timed, no notes, to build exam resilience. Don't just be comfortable. Create slight challenge. Section 9. Sleep, Nutrition, and Movement. Sleep isn't just rest. It's the time when the brain consolidates memories. Staying up late destroys information retention, no matter how hard you've studied. Movement and nutrition matter too. Protein and slow digesting carbohydrates before studying. Proper hydration and a 5 to 10 minute walk to reset your focus. Physical activity increases blood flow to the brain and prepares it for learning. Quick recap. 1. Active recall. Force your brain to remember. 2. Spaced repetition. Schedule your memory. 3. Interleaving. Mix it up to learn better. 4. Elaboration and the Feynman technique. 5. Dual coding. Combine words and images. 6. Effective note systems. Cornell, Zettelkasten, and Smart Summaries. 7. Environment and Focus Rituals. 8. Practice Retrieval Across Contexts. 9. Sleep, Nutrition, and Movement. Which method are you trying first? Drop it in the comments and tag the day you'll start. I'll read and cheer you on. If this helped, like and subscribe for weekly science-backed learning hacks. Study smarter, not harder. See you in the next time.